Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, occasionally, the serene quiet of a select committee hearing gets shattered by true drama. Today, as the BHS family saga unraveled before MPs was one of those. BHS Chief Executive Darren Topp and his financial lieutenant Michael Hitchcock called Dominic Chappelle, the man who brought BHS for a pound, a Premier League liar who had his fingers in the till. Top claimed Chappelle tried to kill him, threatened to kill him, when he'd objected to a million and a half pound transfer. Mr Chappelle denied this and the claim he owned a gun. But, pantomime aside, what did we learn today about what really went on at BHS? Here's our business editor, Helen Thomas. In life, BHS's understated styles captured the British sense of reserve. Its death, not so much. Instead, a tawdry and increasingly lurid slanging match. At issue, who is to blame for the failure of a storied high street name and the loss of 11,000 jobs? Lawyers, accountants, advisors, trustees and regulators, they've all been questioned on what went wrong. Today was the latest stage in the post-mortem. Dominic Chappelle, the man who bought BHS from billionaire retailer Sir Philip Green for just one pound. It collapsed barely a year later. MPs were presented with two conflicting visions of Dominic Chappelle. In one version of reality, he was a total liability, a compulsive liar who didn't understand BHS and who shouldn't have been trusted with it. In the other version, his own. He was a hard-working businessman whose attempts to turn around BHS were blocked. Both versions raise questions for Sir Philip Green. He'll have his turn in Westminster next week. A trio of BHS managers laid out the case against Mr Chappelle. He's a mythomaniac, Premier League liar, a Sunday pub league retailer. It just did not smell right. Yeah. And if it doesn't smell right, invariably it is not right. And this, over £1.5 million Dominic Chappelle took out of the company. That's theft. Now, if I take out all the expletives, he basically said, um, do not kick off about this, Darren. I've had enough of you telling me what to do over the last few months. It's my business. I can do what I want. And if you kick off about it, I'm going to come down there and kill you. So why did a businessman as experienced as Sir Philip Green sell BHS to such a loose cannon? And why did respected advisers like Grant Thornton and Oldswang agree to represent him? One explanation had been that Dominic Chappelle had shown he had £35 million in the bank. But it was suggested today he'd got that money from investors, not to pump into BHS, but instead to buy a property off Sir Philip Green himself. What we learned today was that that £35 million had been earmarked to acquire another property, not part of the BHS group, but part of uh, Sir Philip's broader uh, empire, we understand, um, and that that was the sole purpose of the £35 million. So it does put the seller in an intriguing situation where they were, uh, they were looking for credibility on £35 million to bolster the credibility of the buyer of BHS when that £35 million was actually intended to acquire a property, which isn't part of the BHS group, but was presumably known to, uh, uh, to people around BHS. Um, thank you for In Dominic Chappelle's um, version, Sir Philip Green should take most blame. Um, do you think he's a successful businessman? He's been very successful of raising large amounts of money out of companies by taking huge dividends out of them, yes. There were shops there that had no heating. There were shops there that had no hand, air handling. There were shops there that the staff who, who bless them, who, who loved and adored BHS, came in at weekends to paint, to, to replace lights, because no one had given that company any money for 10 to 12 years. And another disagreement over pensions. Mr Chappelle said a standoff between Sir Philip Green and the pension regulator hurt his attempts to save the company. Sir Philip is a deal doer and he spent the last however many years doing deals and it's a quite different mentality. You can't simply go into the pension regulator and say, look, this is the deal, I will put, and they've talked about a figure of £50 million, I will put £50 million into this pension scheme and with one bound I am free. 
It just doesn't work like that, and it shouldn't work like that. BHS was forced into administration, a defiant Dominic Chappelle said today, pushed there by Sir Philip Green. You should expect Sir Philip Green to vigorously contest much of what was said today. Indeed, BHS's last chief executive, Darren Topp, told me that he disagreed with Mr Chappelle's assertion that Sir Philip had tipped the business into administration. Mr Topp said that decision was taken unanimously at a BHS board meeting on April 21st. Mr Chappelle was there. Mr Topp said the business had simply run out of money and that efforts to raise funds against its property had fallen short. An MP said today that they were getting closer to the truth about BHS's sad demise. One thing seems clear. No one looks set to emerge untainted. Helen Thomas there. Well, Simon Walker from the Institute of Directors joins me now, along with Ros Altman, the Pensions Minister. A warm welcome to both of you. Uh, Simon, the Institute of Directors supports uh, business and, and those who run them. When you see this kind of squalid soap opera unfolding, it must make you wince, it's doesn't it? It's completely inexcusable and it's absolutely outrageous and what worries me is that it makes people think that's what British business is like and it's not what British business is like. British business is about hard-working people who've often mortgaged their houses in order to get companies going. This is as far from the world of normal businesses in this country as anything can so be. So what went wrong? I mean, what, where did the regulations fail here? Everything failed at every stage. I don't think Sir Philip was the only villain, but as someone said, it's the, selling that company to a twice bankrupt racing driver with no retail experience was the equivalent of giving your keys to your, to your yeah. car to a five-year-old and yeah. then saying, you know, you crashed it. That it, it is completely wrong to have done that. But your, your report rightly asks, where were the advisers? One of the most important law firms of the City of London, Old Swan was standing by them. Grant Thornton, a well-known accountancy firm, was there. Lord Grab Governor QC is the chairman of Arcadia and seems to have been extremely relaxed about the sale of BHS. He wasn't even on the subcommittee. He learnt about it five days later. The pension regulator says she read about it in the newspapers mm. sometime later. Uh, everything went wrong and it's, it, it's a scar on the face of British business. It damages everyone's view. And if you believe, as I do, that, that, that capitalism is worthwhile and works in the interests of ordinary people, you have a particular responsibility to say how appalling this is. Dominic Chappelle knew something was going wrong there. And Ros Altman, he brought the government, he brought you personally into that hearing today by saying he'd asked to meet you. Yes, uh, he had asked to meet me and I did, didn't believe that it was appropriate for him to try to meet a minister to go around the back door uh, and bypass the pensions regulator. Why the would it be the back door though? If he was worried about the way that business was being handled and he could see that things weren't right, isn't, isn't that a, a responsible thing to do, to try and contact the pensions minister? No, not at all. The, the appropriate thing to do is to go to the pensions regulator and work out any issues that you have if you've got a problem with your pension scheme, you don't try and come to the minister. The and pensions do you think regulator the pensions is regulator is the right body to deal with these issues after everything we've heard over the past few weeks? I do, actually. And I would like to reassure the, the uh, members of the BHS pension scheme and the workers at BHS who've worked so loyally that their pensions are protected by the Pension Protection Fund. You know, it's really important that why we, did, we I mean, help Simon people just raised that. The point. Why did the pensions regulator say that they'd heard it through um, a newspaper report when we know that actually Philip Green had got in touch with them before and he'd corrected uh, the head of the pensions regulator and why for example was Philip Green not allowed to put any money into the pension fund to try and increase the amount that was there? Again I think it is important for all business owners to understand that a pension fund and its liabilities are real liabilities and they have people's lives attached and there are appropriate that, that ways to deal with the, the pension though. scheme it, because what they should be doing is going to the pensions regulator and saying if you have a big deficit 
how am I going to be able to sort this out? How am I going to be able to look after my pensioners? There are established processes that the pensions regulator will sit down with any business and say, if you want to deal mm. with your pension fund and you have a problem, let's sit around the this table is and what talk about Michael it. Michael Hitchcock said today, though, he said it wasn't taken seriously by the pensions regulator when they offered to go in and sort it out. That isn't the case, as far as I am aware. And actually what uh, has been the impression here is that the business doesn't understand the responsibility that they actually have under pensions law for the pension scheme and the pension promises they've made to their members. The business should be going to the pensions regulator. The pensions regulator will ask for lots of information. If the business doesn't supply that information, the regulator can't do anything. How do you see Philip Green at the end of this whole saga? I mean, he was appointed a, a czar, wasn't he? In August of 2010, an efficiency czar. Does that seem well? Like we have totally to the wrong decision. We, we have to see what these uh, in independent investigations reveal. We are looking at so you still the way think the he might be totally clear. Philip Green might be utterly in the clear. For I this. can't prejudge anything, but what I would like to reassure everybody is that we have a pension protection fund. Thanks to the fact that many people would have lost their Sorry. pensions otherwise, EU law requires us to protect pensions, even though previously British I, law I didn't. would say one thing. The HBOS investigations took eight years and still haven't reported back fully on what led to the fall of that bank. We can't wait till 2025 to find out where the regulators, the lawyers, the accountants all let us down. So if we, we can't need, wait, what has to happen then? We need then? the select committee to give some findings and to come to the truth about all this. Otherwise, it will damage the reputation of business as a whole, and we need to know the answers quickly. OK, yes, thank you And the regulator will report back by the end of the year. Thank you. I've been